The beginnings of the New York Flute Club were decidedly modest, but also a bit of a provocation in a New York City apartment building. In December 1920, Georges Barrer, principal flutist of the New York Symphony and flute teacher at the Institute of Musical Art, later Juilliard, invited 16 flutists to his apartment to play the Kulau Grand Quartet, four to a part. We don't know what the neighbors thought, but the flutists were sufficiently inspired that they started a club. The New York Flute Club was officially incorporated on December 31st, 1920. The inaugural board included Barrere as president, William Kincaid, then a member of the New York Chamber Music Society, as vice president, and flutist composer Lamar Stringfield, treasurer. The first concert took place in, on February 6th, 1921, in the Rose Room of the Ansonia Hotel. The program ended with the full Kulau Quartet. <laughs> in an era long before flute choirs became a phenomenon, the Kulau was a fixture of the club's activities, regularly played on stage and off, with multiple members on a part. For many years, the club was a venue to serve Barrere and his coterie of students and amateurs. Some of the early professional members were Arthur Laura, future principal flutist of the NBC Symphony and Metropolitan Opera, Ellis McDermott, solo flutist of the Sousa Band, Quinto Maganini and George Posell of the New York Symphony, and Meredith Wilson of the Sousa Band and New York Philharmonic, later composer of the Music Band. The amateurs included Otto Ellis Hovey, a noted bridge engineer who designed the emergency locks for the Panama Canal, and naturalist Edward F. Bigelow, founder of the Bruce Museum in Greenwich, Connecticut. Another was Lewis Maurer, the last living engraver from Courier and Ives, who took up the flute at age 80 and lived to be 100. Barrer was ahead of his time in supporting American composers and women composers and performers, traditions that continue today. The works of his students, Lamar Stringfield and Quinto Maganini, appeared often on the early programs. In 1921, the club premiered Robert Russell Bennett's Rondo Capriccioso for four flutes, and it published the piece in 1922. A typical program was Barrer's December 1938 recital, titled New Music for Flute. He introduced a solo work by an American woman, Marion Bauer, a leader of the League of Composers, in addition to works of his French comrade, Philippe Gobert, Richard Franco Goldman, and Eugene Goussens. Regular Sunday afternoon concerts became the backbone of the club's activities, with opportunities for members at various levels to participate in ensembles and, as described in the 1934 membership brochure, quote, playing the flute in the presence of others during the amateur hour, accompanied by an outstanding pianiste who wore a hat. No earmuffs, just a hat. <laughs> For the first two decades of the club's existence, almost all the performers were New Yorkers, young professionals and seasoned veterans, 21 by Barrere himself, five by John Ammons of the New York Philharmonic. Gradually, visitors arrived. Georges Laurent, principal flutist of the Boston Symphony, gave a recital in 1922. Ari Van Leeuwen, Principal flutist in Cincinnati, came in 1923. Then Lambros Dimitrios Kalimahos, Vern Q. Powell, Rene Leroy, and the U.S. debut of the, of the Moise Trio in 1950. Barrer remained president until his death in 1944. John Wommer, principal flutist of the New York Philharmonic, then assumed the presidency. His successors included his wife, Wild Mildred Hunt Wommer, Milton Wittgenstein of WQXR, Paige Brook, Associate Principal of the Philharmonic, Frederick Wilkins, New York City Opera and New York City Ballet, and Harry Moskowitz, New York City Opera. Then Eleanor Lawrence, Harold Jones, and John Solom. All of these presidents were active performers on the concert series. John Wommer holds the record 
42 concerts over 37 years. <laughs> the last just nine months before his death in 1977. Paige Brook was second with 29. The club has presented more than 700 concerts and other events, including many traditional recitals and chamber music programs. Here is the highlights reel. In 1927, there was a demonstration of the trombone flute by <laughs> Henry Emerson Wetherill. That was Robert Dick before Robert Dick. <laughs> On a small scale, Harry Moskowitz gave six unaccompanied flute concerts between 1960 and 1973. In 1977, Lawrence Trott of the Buffalo Symphony gave the first all piccolo concert in the city with two premieres and four composers in attendance. On a large scale, under Jane Rosenfeld's leadership, we performed and recorded Henry Brandt's Ghosts and Gargoyles and Mass in Gregorian Chant for multiple flutes to accompany the CD reissue of the classic CRI recording of Angels and Devils. There were 24 flutists including four contras crammed on stage at Baruch for the Harvey Solberger 80th birthday celebration last year. And this fall, we took 100 flutes for 100 years to Governor's Island. We've had non-Western flutes, Chinese, Indian, African, and shakuhachi. We've danced and stretched, Baroque minuets, yoga, and Zara Lawler in the flute on its feet. In 1976, for the Bicentennial, we presented the Flute in American Music, a concert that became a Musical Heritage Society, LP. We organized tributes to composers Harvey Solberger, Ezra Latterman, Otto Luning, Elliot Carter, and Catherine Hoover. In 1982, we honored Frances Blaisdell on her 80th birthday with a surprise cameo by Jean-Pierre Rampal. Francis held the record for flute club membership, 80 years. We've curated two major exhibitions at the New York Public Library for the Performing Arts, one on historic flutes and the Barrera Celebration in 1994. From the 1980s, presidents such as Sue Ann Kahn, Patricia Spencer, and Jane Rosenfeld continued the attention to new music with concerts such as Tomorrow's Classics, recent flute pieces with staying power in 2002. Over 99 years, the club has hosted the premieres of more than 190 works. Its first composition contest yielded the Eldon Burton Sonatina, dedicated to Samuel Barron, premiered by Arthur Laura, and played often by John Wommer, who recorded it with the composer. The piece rapidly established itself in the standard repertoire. As far back as the 1950s, there was a Spring Young Artists concert, which in the early 1970s evolved into a competition for young professional flutists, and many of the winners have gone on to outstanding orchestral and solo careers. Paula Robeson, Trudy Kane, Renee Siebert, Carol Winsents, Ransom Wilson, Michael Parloff, Linda Chessis, Sandra Church, Gary Shocker, Maria Piccinini, Rie Schmidt, Chelsea Knox, and Zara Lawler are just some of the winners who have pursued careers in New York. As competitions became a bigger presence in music education, the club decided in 2008 to institute a contest for pre-college students. We've seen our share of tiger moms, but also lots of cute, talented kids with truly awesome skills. Ensemble playing has always been a key activity, starting with those quartet readings with Barrer. By the 1970s or so, there were annual fall ensemble days. The program has evolved into a monthly flute choir gathering that includes both professional and amateur members. In 1994, we organized the first New York Flute Fair, which brought together many of the club's ongoing programs. Concerts, the competitions, lectures and workshops, master classes and ensembles. We started at the top with Jean-Pierre Rampal as our guest artist. 
and flute fairs have been held nearly every year since. The New York Flute Club was not the first in the United States, but it is the one that has lasted. It is, in fact, the oldest non-keyboard musical instrument organization in the world, preceded only by the American Guild of Organists. It has been the model for the National Flute Association and many other flute clubs. We're fortunate that we started with Barrere because of his charisma, his French bonhomie, his support for composers, and his extensive roster of students and fans. He had an outsized influence on the club. Our goal remains the same as his, as he stated in a 1923 toast to the members. The real mission of a flute club is to promote better music and to get together good-natured flutists. <laughs> With apologies to Henry Brandt, here we have no devils, only angels. <laughs> Onward to our second century. Thank you.